So what to do when you have a PC tear occurring at the start of FECO? Hello everybody, this is a mature case which had an extended capsular axis here at the superior nasal area. Uh, when I was uh, here dividing the nucleus and then starting FECO2, the nucleus started to drop. Here in slow motion, i repeating that this area had an extended axis. So what I did here is that I engaged vacuum occlusion and vacuums bit power and then the, the nucleus was occluded in the FECO tip and I tried with the FECO tip to just supinate my hand to try to bring the nucleus upwards into the anterior chamber. Here I'm using viscoelastic to fill the eye with the viscoelastic below the nucleus and try to mechanically push the nucleus with the visco probe, uh, with the visco cannula and with while injecting visco uh, so that the nucleus wouldn't drop. I do not advise for fishing. If the nucleus had dropped, we I leave it to be dropped and then go for the retrectomy. But here it's not fished. It was just here at the, in the anterior chamber. So with the viscoelastic, it was uh, I was able to with the spatula and viscoelastic to support the nucleus and prolapse it into the AC. So this was the difficult part. So what to do here? Uh, some vitrectomy, of course, some vitreous here uh, came out from the wound and then uh, I decided to see whether there, is, uh, there are no drop particles so I decided to go for the IOL scaffold technique. The IOL scaffold technique is very useful if you can salvage your FACO procedure. How to do it is that we put the uh, three-piece IOL into the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber uh, uh, the angle of the anterior chamber, the haptics are very stable uh, in the angle of the anterior chamber. Uh, sometimes you can leave the trailing haptic outside to ensure more stability of the IOL, especially if the pupil is very wide. But here the pupil was moderately wide, so I put the uh, IOL into the anterior chamber uh, as a whole. Uh, then the most important thing here is to cut the, the remaining vitreous as much as possible. Of course, some vitreous can prolapse during FACO afterwards, but um, uh, it can be done. Second of all, the most important thing also is that uh, you have to protect the cornea. The, here you are, we are working FACO very close to the cornea, so every piece, uh, so I go out, put viscoelastic from the uh, side port, and then go back inside and continue chopping the nucleus until uh, it uh, ends. And the IOL is protecting the nucleus from escaping uh, to the, into the vitreous cavity, putting visco all over uh, between uh, FACO, taking some time, no problem. Taking care if there are some vitreous strands, as you can see here, you can just avoid them or cut them and then continue your FACO. And then the, here, uh, it was an advantage that the nucleus is mature, so it was uh, uh, totally prolapsed and totally finished. Then doing some vitrectomy, to be sure to do some cortical cleanup and some vitrectomy, uh, be aware of the vitreous. No, nothing dropped, the red reflex is fine. Now we are assessing the support. The support is almost complete, around 270 degrees around, so the three piece can be implanted into the sulcus. Uh, I usually like to dial the three piece, but here I'm just inserting the haptic below the iris uh, into the sulcus because dialing here can take the capsule and it can uh, extend the extension. Uh, the problem of the IL scaffold technique is that some micro hyphen may occur uh, due to the friction of the haptics in the angle, but this may they resolve in a couple of days. So after that, the IOL is stable, because testing the stability of the IOL in the sulcus. It's fine, no problem. Doing some vitrectomy if there's some vitreous prolapse, uh, court, uh, clean up of the visco, and then concluding the uh, surgery. You may put pilocarpine, the pupil is already. Uh, okay, and uh, sweeping showed no vitreous, no problem. Thank you so much, and waiting for your comments. Thank you so much.